is Tony Riley. Uh, I've been here about 36 years or so uh, in the psych department. My area of interest is neuropharmacology, and so by virtue of that I teach courses like Drugs and Behavior at the undergraduate level, which focuses on the biology of rewarding effects of drugs, and I teach uh, neuropharmacology at the graduate level, which is a neurochemistry course based on uh, looking at brain and behavior. Uh, my hobby is kind of evolution, so I also teach an evolution course and the evolution of evolution, kind of the history of evolution. My lab is really looking at it as this balance of aversion and reward. Any, any particular drug, we look at the rewarding effects and the aversive effects and ask about how that balance underlies vulnerability. And what my lab does is look at kind of all the factors that might impact that balance such factors as uh, a genetic history. There are select strains of animals, like there are select uh, various mutations in humans of various types of alleles that might make you more or less likely to use a drug or sample a drug or abuse a drug. So we look at the genetic variables, we look at maternal influences, we look at adolescent influences, how the, the, that balance changes with adolescence history to drugs. We look at drug interactions, we look at receptor mediation. So all we're really looking at are the various factors that determine abuse potential uh, working with that uh, relationship between reward and aversion. We're, we're finding, uh, along with other people in, in, the, in the research field, that adolescent drug history has a major effect in uh, terms of vulnerability to drug use. But we're finding that adolescents find drugs much more rewarding than adults. The same drug, if you monitor them or measure them in the same behavioral assay, adolescents will find the drug much more rewarding than adults do. Furthermore, we're finding that if uh, adolescents have a history of the drug, if they sample the drug, of course they find it rewarding with less aversive, they're much more likely to use the drug as adults by virtue of that history. So we're finding adolescent history plays a major role in subsequent vulnerability to drug use and drug abuse. We're also finding that different maternal histories of genetic strains, we have certain strains that love drugs and some strains that don't like drugs at all by virtue of certain types of genetic uh, uh, characteristics. If we now rear the animals who don't like drugs by the mother who likes drugs, we can reverse preferences. We can have the animals that have a genetic kind of dis disinclination not to use the drug, to use the drug more. And we give, if, we tr if we raise the animals who like the drugs with mothers who don't, we can reverse that tendency as well. So we're finding all these histories, whether it be, I'd like to, I tell my students, I think of history as a continuum from genetic to current. Oh, you don't tend to think of current as being a history or genetic as being a history. All those factors influence drug use and abuse. So our lab is really focused on history of drug taking, how that impacts vulnerability to abuse.